Hey, everybody. Welcome to episode 25 of C3 Crystals, Cauldrons, and Cocktails. I'm River. And I'm Ren. And today we're going to talk about another witch tool, the besom or the broom to be the more witches. concise, I guess. <laughs> but first, we have to tell everybody what cocktail we are drinking. Yes. So we've come up with a new one. It is called the Witch's Blood, mm-hmm, and me. it <laughs> is Aperol mixed with champagne, and it has marinated black cherries in it. So and good. And it's so good. Delicious. So, all right. So let's get started with talking about brooms. Mm-hmm. So you you start. Okay. So what is it? What is a broom? <laughs> <laughs> so Wikipedia's definition of a broom is a broom is a broom. <laughs> It's just like oh, a Lord. an herb is an herb, herb. is an herb. <laughs> so a broom is a household implement used for sweeping. Did I say that mm-hmm. right? Implement. Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, there are some words in here that I may mispronounce. I thought you were asking if you said sweeping right. And I'm like, how do you mispronounce sweeping? <laughs> sweeping, I don't know. <laughs> Um, the term is now mostly reserved for a traditional broom constructed from a bundle of twigs tied to a stout pole. Mm-hmm. So the twigs used could be, whoa, my eye skipped my, <laughs> my line. <laughs> Your notes. <laughs> I know. The twigs used could be broom or like genistia, genista, genista. I don't know. Uh, from which the comes from the modern word broom for tool. Like that's just is, like another word for. Is that an herb or something? No, it's just like another word, another term for modern day broom. Broom. Oh, okay. Heather. You could also use heather. He- heather. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. <laughs> heather. We heather can- is that gorgeous stuff that you see in pictures of the Highlands of Scotland. The the gorgeous. Um, you know, whenever you see a picture of the Highlands and you see that purple type grass looking stuff, that's Heather. Oh, not Heather. <laughs> not not Heather. <laughs> Heather, Heather, tomato, tomato. Um, or similar. Okay, so the song by Broom, Buzzums, from Northern England refers to both types of twig, which I thought was pretty cool. <laughs> I've never heard of it. Do you have I a piece haven't of it? either. No. <laughs> You'll have to pull it and insert it here because I want to know what it sounds like. Yeah, but it could also be copyright. So. <laughs> oh yeah, we might not be able to. Maybe Google. we can post a link to it or something. Yeah, yeah. I'll look. I'll look for a link. But um, and then the phrase from the phrase "broom besom," the more common broom comes from, and in Scotland, besoms are still occasionally to be found at the edge of forests where they are stacked for use in early like response to an outbreak of fire which i thought was cool oh that's fascinating i didn't yeah. know that yeah yeah besoms are also called uh, a fairy horse or fairy's horse like f-a-e-r-y apostrophe s horse horse <laughs> fairy's horse like you know giddy up yeah. okay. that's not what i thought of when i thought of course <laughs> It's um, one of the most traditional tools associated with the witch, probably the most common associated with witches. You always see the picture of witch witch with her broom, although maybe the hat. The hat, I I was thinking the hat. But the broom is pretty common. Mm -hmm. It is thought to be a masculine tool. Remember where we talked about feminine and masculine aspects of the witch's tools? Well, this one is supposedly a masculine tool because Mm -hmm. of its phallic shape. So uh, history. Yeah, history. I want to go back to the masculine and feminine thing. Well, do it. Though. It's weird, though, because like, and I know I'll talk a little bit more about this, but like the broom is like traditionally seen as like a household item. And traditionally, obviously, we have some stereotypes that the women, yeah. like the women stay in the house, they clean, broom, yeah, you know, so I can and see where it's masculine yeah yeah i can see where like the brooms with witches like witch women Ooh, that's a like try saying that a couple times fast but (laughs) like i can see where that stems from because like women are associated with like the house and cleaning and brooms but like Mm -hmm. it being a masculine tool is just like interesting (laughs) yeah it's just because of it's shaped like a penis 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So history. It's yes. not clear where the broom was first invented, but it <laughs> sweeps back to ancient times. <laughs> sweeps back. <laughs> <laughs> Oh y'all, um these are good drinks. <laughs> did you did you like my pun there? <laughs> I did. Uh, hopefully our listeners did. We're, yeah. we're funny. We we think we're funny. <laughs> yeah. And people first used thin sticks to sweep aside dust or ash from like a fire or hearth, which I thought was very interesting. Sticks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what I yeah. imagine is like like a wood like stick, but scraping against like stone. So it makes that like scratchy oh, feeling in your yeah, ears. That's yeah. what I pictured. It just makes me feel funny. <laughs> like fingernails on the chalkboard. Yeah, exactly. Oh, that's what yeah. I think of when I read that. Also, <laughs> did you know? Oh, she's got a did you know? <laughs> I do. That this household task shows up in the New Testament in the first and second centuries AD, which I thought was very interesting. Huh. And also to interject, I made an error in one of our previous episodes when I told River that common era meant the same thing as um, before common era, like BCE, CE. Yeah. 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 Cause I didn't have a clue. I don't, I don't know. Yeah, I I've been meaning to correct myself, <laughs> but yes, <laughs> it is common era, not BCE. Like they're not the same thing. They're both they're okay. different things. Unless if I'm wrong on that, like <laughs> I'm pretty sure that they're not the same thing. Okay. Also the word broom actually comes from a plant or shrub used to make the first broom slash earliest brooms since we huh. don't really know like when the first broom was created. Okay. And then in Old English, it was called besom, which we've already talked a little mm -hmm. bit about. Like we've already popped that word in here. Mm -hmm. But both terms, besom and broom, are still both used. So mm -hmm. both used today. I always use the word besom. I that's what I call them. I call them brooms. <laughs> or <laughs> well, I don't use a broom to clean the house. I only use broom for for magical uses. So besom seems more fitting i use brooms to kill bugs so <laughs> <laughs> well there you go so it's a bug killer as well <laughs> <laughs> so for as long as we know brooms they've been like associated with women and use a power like they are a powerful symbol for feminine feminine the female uh little cheese <laughs> i tried to catch myself i couldn't female um and i always domesticity yes i always mess that word up well the drinks don't um help mm -mm. <laughs> we probably shouldn't have started before we started the uh -huh. podcast <laughs> <laughs> but that's funny to me because like you said it is considered a masculine tool and yet it's associated with women and housework mm -hmm. you know yeah as a, so that is it's weird. just weird also yeah. <laughs> did you know <laughs> another did you know another did you know that the first person to, conf to confess riding a broom was actually a man. Really? Mm -hmm. His name was Gil, I can't say it, Gilamon, Gil, how do you say that? G Gil Guillaume, 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 Edelin. Ed Edelin. He was a priest from St. Germain, I'm not going to try that, near Paris. <laughs> Somewhere near Paris, y'all. Yeah. He was arrested in 1453 and tried for witchcraft after publicly criticizing the church's warnings about witches. Huh. His confession came from under torture, but he eventually like repent, but he was still in prison for life. I did not know that, but did mm -hmm. you know, I have a, did you know, mm -hmm. did you know that male witches back in that time period were usually depicted as riding on pitchforks as opposed to the brooms? How come, how come men get to ride pitchforks? Well, actually, I don't know if pitchforks are better or worse than brooms. I feel like the pitchforks wouldn't catch the wind. Like in my head. The, <laughs> the bristles, scientist. Yeah, the, yeah, I know. The bristles <laughs> on the broom help somehow. But mm -hmm. the pitchfork has nothing going for it. <laughs> yeah. Plus, if you wanted to have like you're familiar if it's a cat or whatever riding on the back, it wouldn't be very comfortable to sit on the tongs of a pitchfork. No, 
But I wonder why men were depicted as as riding pitchforks and women brooms. I get, you know, a pitchfork is more of a masculine, you know, that's associated with men at that time period working out in the fields and that kind of thing. Whereas the broom is inside with women working in the house. I don't know. I guess. But I don't know. By that time of his confession, the idea of witches riding around on broomsticks was really well established. Yeah. He was just the first one to announce like, it. Yeah, admit it. Yeah. Okay. And so the earliest known images of witches on brooms dates to 1451. Okay. Uh, when two illustrations appeared in the French poet Martin Le France's manuscript, Le Champ. I took French. I was going to say, you should be yeah. knocking this out of the park, girl. <laughs> uh, le, le champion des dames, maybe? Yeah, that the sounds... defender of ladies. I'm sold. That yeah. sounded good to me. <laughs> yeah. In the, in the two drawings, one woman soars through the air on a broom and the other flies like aboard a plane, like on a white stick, right? Well, that's weird. And both wear headscarves that identify them as, I don't know this term. But it, it, it Waldensians, Waldensians, Walden, Waldensians, Waldensians. They are members of a Christian sect found in the 12th century who were branded as heretics by the Catholic Church, and they were also like in this. It was partly because they allowed women to become priests. Like that. Oh like, well, yeah, of course they were heretics back then. Yeah. And Interesting. Then, mm-hmm. And then in the beginning of the 7th century, accounts of witches using broomsticks to fly up and out of chimneys became more commonplace, even as women became more closely associated with, like, the household items, the domestic um, sphere, like, what they've known, of like, the the stereotype. You know, last week, was it last week, where I was talking about that witch that, um, two weeks ago, maybe, the witch... That's like Santa Claus and comes mm-hmm. down the chimney. I have never heard of a witch flying out of a chimney. That's pretty I know. cool. Interesting. And then according to one custom, women would prop a broom up outside a door or place it up, up a chimney <laughs> to let okay. others know that they were away from the home. Huh. Mm-hmm. I thought that was like, I'm that's, not home. I'm going to place my broom outside. <laughs> that's but, what... That's weird. Yeah, but also I don't want my broom outside to let people I'm not home because then they could come rob me. <laughs> I know. And I, I guess in modern day times, that is what our fear is. Oh, no, we don't want people to know we're not home because then they'll come take stuff. But I yeah. guess back then it, they probably didn't even lock their doors back then. Did they have locks? I, you know, <laughs> I, I, feel don't like, know. I feel like they would have. This is the 14th, 1400s. Yeah, right? I don't. I, yeah, I no 15th idea. century. I don't know. Well, but so. Yeah. <laughs> Another tradition involving the Besom is that um, this so-called ride pole dance, R-I-D-E-P-O-L-E dance. And that's where the riders would straddle their brooms. Remember how as a kid, I don't know if you ever had one, but the, the little hobby horses that are the, the head, horse head on a stick and you oh, yeah, I did. get on it. And, okay. So they would do that with their brooms and jump high to encourage the crops to grow. And so some people believe that's where the idea came that witches fly on brooms to begin with. Supposedly they jumped to show the crops how high they needed to grow. Hmm. And very strange. <laughs> that's I know. Weird. I know. Well, why do witches ride brooms? Like, you know? Yeah. Well, uh, from the source I found, it said it started with bread. <laughs> bread. Mm-hmm. Okay, tell so me more. In the Europe and in in the Europe in Europe uh, during the Middle Ages and into the Renaissance, bread was made in a large pot with rye, and the rye on rye like plants can host fungus, uh-huh. right? Um, that when consumed in high dosages, it's lethal, but in smaller dosages, however, and it's called ergo, ergot, ergot. Ergo. that sounds right. I've heard of that. Um, ergot. It can be a powerful hallucinogen. Oh, yeah. Oh. So records from 14th to the 17th century 
mentions Europeans afflicted with dancing mania, which found groups of people dancing through the streets, often speaking, speaking nonsense and foaming at the mouth as they did so until they collapsed from exhaustion. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. So those who experienced the mania would later describe these wild visions that accompanied it. So like in the 20th century, Albert Hoffman would realize that psychedelic effects of LSD like from Ergo while he was studying it. So now it's like they might have been like tripping. (laughs) So, oh my God, these people back in the day were tripping on LSD and they had no idea. Let's go eat some yeah. bread. Do you want to go eat some bread? No. Let's go eat some bread. No. <laughs> Maybe that's why they were running around in the cornfields trying to get show the crops how high to grow. <laughs> Could you just imagine? <laughs> oh no. So people as like they adapted to this knowledge, figuring out ways to tame the the I can't, I don't know if I'm saying it right. I don't, so I don't know want to either. keep saying like Arago, Aragot. Uh, don't ergot, know ergot, yeah. i don't know um for the hallucinogenic like genic purposes and oh of they, course they did yeah they experimented with other plants um as well which i thought was interesting that is interesting mm-hmm. so bread can make us high let's see what else can make us high yeah <laughs> but uh yeah there's also a uh, hallucinogenic uh chemicals in nightshade like deadly nightshade and Henbane mm-hmm. and mandrake and jimson weed, which I know we've talked a little bit about some of those, but yeah, isn't belladonna the one that goes into the greasy baby fat? Yes, remember the flying yes. ointment? Did, <laughs> wasn't that made out of? of I think so. If I'm belladonna correctly, which makes sense. Yeah, this totally makes sense now. It all ties together. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, in the 16th century, the Spanish court physician Andreas de Laguna, Laguna claimed to have taken a pot full of certain green ointment, which kind of turned like, yeah, composed of herbs such as hemlock, nightshade, henbane, and mandrake um, from the home of a couple of the accused of being uh, wit- witches. Yes. Oh, <laughs> so he found this ointment mm-hmm. in people's homes and yeah. then said, see, they're witches. Yeah. That was in the 16th century, though. So this was going on from the 14th century all the way to the 17th century. Well, I feel like back in those days, they used these herbs for all kinds of purposes. I guess Mm -hmm. if they wanted to prove you were a witch, they could just say you were making baby grease ointment with it. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Baby fat. I mean, baby fat. Yeah. So, like, obviously, you're like, well, why do the brooms fit into this? Well, it's because of the achieved hallucinogens, like this early drug users seeing things, you know? So Mm -hmm. it's easy to just say, Oh, I just hallucinated my friend flying up on a broom above. Or maybe they hallucinated and believed it, that they were flying. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And also when they consume this, um, these hallucinogens that caused like unpleasantness, obviously, such as nausea, vomiting, skin irritation. Okay. And what people realized though, was that absorbing this, like the hallucinogens through their skin could lead to the hallucin, like hallucinations that arrived without unsavory side effects, such as seeing things. <laughs> oh. mm-hmm. So it's pretty much all like chalked up to, people just seeing things because of these hallucinogens Hmm. and the most receptive areas of the body for the absorption were the sweat glands and the armpits and the mucous membranes from the genitals. Yay. Yay. (laughs) So people use their developing pharmaceutical information to produce the drug Ladin bombs, like laden, however Mm -hmm. you say it, um, for witches brew. (laughs) Yep. Which, yep. is, which I thought was very interesting because I'd never mm-hmm. heard of that before. I was like, what? That's pretty interesting. Yeah. yeah. And to, sorry, and to distribute those salves. Sa- uh, salves. Salves with maximum effort, effort level, effectiveness. These crafty hallucinators. Wow. That's a weird way to put it. Borrowed a technology from the home, which was a broom. So specifically the handle of the broom. And yes, you get the idea. <laughs> Yeah, that that cracks me up. I came across this as well. And I'm thinking, okay, sex, sex toys, 16th century style. 
Yeah, supposedly inserting the ointment that way was a quicker way to obtain those hallucinations. Yeah. And I guess without the side effects that you were talking about, yeah. <laughs> which now makes more sense why this is seen as a masculine symbol now. Yes, I uh, guess. Yeah. According to an investigation into witchcraft from, and let's backtrack a little bit, 1324, in rifling the closet of the lady, they found a pipe of ointment uh, wherewith she greased a staff upon which she ambled and galloped through thick and thin. So basically, yeah, she put the yeah. baby, baby, greasy baby fat on, on the broom and hopped around on it in between her legs. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> yeah, and there's a writing from the fifth century, uh, Jordanes de Bergamo. Okay. <laughs> the vulgar believe that witches that the witches confess that on certain days or nights they anoint a staff and ride on it to the uh, um, appointed place or anoint themselves under the arms in other hairy places. <laughs> Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Like okay. Yeah, so the brooms are a bit odd. <laughs> yeah. I mean, people also identify the brooms or, or besoms with old wedding ceremonies where, you know, the couples would jump the broom. I, I know in uh, like Celtic history, pagan history, for sure, um, they would jump the broom at their weddings, which is to cross the, thre the threshold into their new lives. And mm -hmm. it ensured fertility, domestic harmony and lot longevity. And the besom is considered to be the threshold of home. Mm. And this can, custom continues today in modern day times. There's modern day hand fasting weddings. Mm -hmm. um, and when a part of the ceremony, the bridal couple jumps across the, the broom and it can be decorated and all of that. And I did read, and this is another, did you know that <laughs> if the mar marriage doesn't work or if, in, if, blah, 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 if it ends in divorce, jumping the broom backwards will break that commitment. Oh, but you got to get those two people together to. I know. And if, if they're divorced, how are they going to get manage to get together to jump backwards over that broom? Yeah. Uh, anyway, <laughs> but uh, one of my dear friends got married in a pagan ceremony and had a besom that they jumped over hmm. and it was made and they picked out the colors and uh, the place made it for them specifically for them to awesome. use at, at their wedding. Yeah. Also in Renaissance times, the demonologists back then, the, the devil himself would present brooms and flying ointment to newly initiated witches so that they could fly to the Sabbaths. Oh. And often they carried their familiar in the shape of demons or animals like the kitty cat. Mm -hmm. And they were said to fly across the fields, blasting their neighbor's crops, or they would ride out to sea in order to raise up storms, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. So apparently that's what they did back in the day with it. They used it as a sex toy and they flew and damaged crops with it. Whatever. <laughs> they we don't do those. At least nobody I know does those things. If you do, that's fine. What, what each to each their own. But mm -hmm. today they're mainly used for purification and protection. Mm -hmm. And oak, one made from oak is especially good for this. I mean, physically we use brooms to sweep away dirt and debris, magical or not. Mm -hmm. So it makes sense that magically we would use our brooms to sweep away negative energy in our home and to clear out our sacred space. I have a question. Um, yes. Is a vacuum technically a broom? <laughs> I know, right? Except for you're not sweeping away, you're pu pulling it into the device. But then if you throw the device yeah. out the door, oh. <laughs> does it? Or throw it away outside of your house. Does that remove it that way? I don't know. Well, I don't know what show it is or show or movie that I saw, but it was like a funny like. Hocus Pocus. Hocus Pocus where they used a vacuum to fly yeah. away. Yeah. One of the sisters rides on a vacuum because she just, couldn't find a broom. I thought that was like, and it just <laughs> popped into my head. And so like, <laughs> is a vacuum a broom? <laughs> possibly, possibly it could be used that way. Mm -hmm. uh, ritually cleaning a circle casting area before magic is done. That's another use in modern times. You sweep the area clean of negative energies and astral buildup so that you're ready to cast your next spell or do whatever round of next magic that you're wanting to do. 
one of the um, websites I sh- I saw said that you walk clock ro- clockwise around the circle, sweeping the broom, which you usually hold slightly above the ground, but you don't have to, but that's generally how it's done. Mm -hmm. And then as per usual with our research, I found something that was completely opposite of that. (laughs) And then it says that you walk around the circle counterclockwise. And Mm -hmm. the reasoning behind this one said that counterclockwise quote undoes end quote things. And so that there therefore it clears the negative energy when you do it counterclockwise it's doing oh. things backwards you're undoing things hmm. oh i also have like is a swiffer a broom <laughs> i think like, it could be like a cl- because i feel like i'm overthinking it but i also have a it's it's what i use as a broom it doesn't have bristles it's just basically like a flat pad that you just sweep everything up with and you can mm-hmm. also like spray stuff on the floor and clean it up that way I think the key would be, yeah, how do you get rid of it afterwards? Mm -hmm. Like with a broom, especially in the olden days, you would sweep it out of your house, Mm -hmm. you know, because back then they didn't have the screen doors and the pan and all that. They would just sweep it straight out of the house. So if you're using a Swiffer or a vacuum, I think it comes to how you're dispelling what you're cleaning up because that's what you're trying to rid the space of. And if you keep it in the house then I don't know that it's going to help, mm-hmm. you know, or, or it might clean the area that you've cleaned. But then if you put it in the closet, you might end up storing all that negative energy in the closet. Yeah. If you don't immediately dispose of that, that energy. Yeah. I don't okay. know. Okay. I, I don't know. Mm-hmm. And then hand fasting, as I said, um, you could supposedly Hawthorne is the best wood to use for a hand fasting vessel. Mm-hmm. You can use your wand as your broom as a wand, which you talked about when we mm-hmm. talked about wands, you said that yes. um, the broom can also be used as a wand. It's good for channeling your spells. If you place a besom on your altar, it will help in your spell casting, especially directing your energy. Mm-hmm. Um, and you can actually get small sized besoms for just for your altar, just made specifically for your altar. Oh. Etsy has a bunch of them and they're adorable. Oh, I want one. (laughs) Yeah, they're adorable. Um, You can use them for speaking to the dead. This was one I did not know. Oh. It says, if you place a besom across the doorway, it will allow you to speak to those who have passed on. (sighs) So long as the broom is there, they will feel free to communicate with you. So if you wish to talk to a friend or relative who has passed, the besom will make that possible for you. What doorway? What does it depend on a specific doorway? I, I don't know. Does it I mean, count I'm, if my broom falls across my doorway? Because I've now, had like a broom fall across my doorway. There is a superstition, which I know you're going to get into about falling brooms. And I'll tell oh, that's that true. later. But um, I don't know if it has anything to do with what door or where you place it. Should it be a door to the outside, which signifies going into another you know, from inside your house to the outside world, which mm-hmm. that's symbolic for another realm or, and does it have to be at a certain time of the moon phase or does mm-hmm. it have to be a certain direction? You know, you and your feng shui stuff, does yeah. it, does it need to be a doorway facing a specific, you know, the elements are, are associated with different um, directions and that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. So I don't know, but that is supposed to be, a way to do that. Hmm. Interesting. So you, some, yeah, yeah. You come up with some superstitions, some superstitions. And I actually have one. You remember that trend that went around where people were placing their brooms and standing straight up and down. Oh yeah. I vaguely remember that. I feel like there has yeah. to be something around that. I don't think I talk particularly about anything specific about that. I forgot about that, but yeah, yeah. I remember, it, I remember it worked. seeing that. It worked because I tried it too. <laughs> yeah. It was like on TikTok or something. Yeah. It was all yeah. On TikTok. Yeah. Well, superstition. So it's considered unlucky to sweep dust out of a door after nightfall. Don't know why. Interesting. Okay. Never sweep on New Year's Day or you'll sweep away your luck for the coming year, which I've heard that one. I've heard also don't. Don't do anything on New Year's Day that you don't want to be stuck doing for the rest of the year. So cleaning would be number one on my list. (laughs) 
I don't want to be cleaning the whole rest of the year. Although probably you like to clean. So. I love to clean. Yeah. You're weird that way. Or maybe yeah. I'm weird that I, think I don't you're like weird. to clean. I think you're weird. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you do the odd episodes because you're This odd. is true because I'm <laughs> odd. If a visitor is staying over, like o- overstaying his welcome or their welcome, stand a broom up behind the door of the room in which he's been like being entertained Mm -hmm. and he will soon grow uncomfortable and leave. (laughs) That is fascinating. Which, okay. So I'm confused because with that one, my whole living room is just basically like one room, like where we eat and live and like basically. So what door would I put it? Like my front door? Where do they spend the night if they spend the night? Probably. Well, it's just like them overstaying their welcome. So it could oh, be. Oh, them- you get tired of people without them even having to spend the night. I, are yeah. you trying to yeah, tell yeah, yeah. me something? Wow. <laughs> so, I'll like, have to be on the lookout for brooms when I come to your yeah. house. <laughs> so, like, let's say we have someone, we're entertaining someone in our living room, but we don't have a door into our living room. What door would it be? Our front door? I would say the closest door. Well, with our yours, closest, you've got a back door and a front a, door all yeah, in the same room. Yeah, we have a back door, a front door, and then uh, the other door is like an entryway into a hallway. It doesn't actually have a door on it. So, yeah. like, which door would I put it? Like, I would say the front door. The front door. I mean, uh, yeah. But then do I put it outside the front door? I don't think so. Like, I just stand a broom or, up beside the door, up beside the door. You could do it out by your back door because that might force them to if they're uncomfortable with it, they might go towards the front door and leave. That's true. That's true. Don't know. Yeah. Well, (laughs) and to prevent the return of an undesirable overnight guest, sweep the room he or she slept in as soon as possible after their departure. (laughs) Interesting. (laughs) There's a lot of, uh, I want people to leave. (laughs) Apparently so. (laughs) Witches are very solitary people. So, you know, we like other people to a degree. (laughs) Stand a broom beside the front door to bar the entryway of negativity. Oh, interesting. Which I I feel like that also ties in with the other ones where you put it close to the door and you get rid of. Yeah. Yeah. To bring rain, you are supposed to stand outside and swing the broom and the air over your head. Mm-hmm. I feel like the neighbors would really wonder what the heck I was doing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm bringing rain, y'all. I'm bringing yeah. rain. <laughs> oh, I should try that. I love it when it rains. Yeah, me too. It is raining here today. Mm-hmm. If one sweeps under the foot of an unmarried person, he or she will never marry. What? Yeah, that's terrible. Yeah, if one sweeps under the feet of an unmarried person, he or she will never be married, which I don't understand. What do you mean? Like sweep towards the person and under them? Like, I don't know. Yeah, my my feet touch the ground. So I don't, I mean, are they talking about you're sitting on a chair so high your feet just dangle like a little kid or? Maybe, but then in that instance, like that's been, I've done that all the time. Like, like, like growing up, my parents clean, they would sweep, be like, lift up your feet and they would sweep under me mm-hmm. or vacuum or whatever. Mm-hmm. So, and I'm married. So <laughs> interesting. Okay. Uh, if an unmarried woman steps over a broom that is lying on the floor, she will become a mother before she becomes a wife. Oh, how funny. Which I, <laughs> which I think is very funny because I've stepped over a numerous amount of brooms laying on the floor and I am married without a child. So, <laughs> mm-hmm. well, I figure a, a lot of these superstitions came from times before birth control yeah. and that kind of thing too. Yeah, so. that's true. Yeah. If someone sweeps over your feet, which I've already, I've, yeah, you okay. are in danger of going to jail unless you immediately spit on the brush of the broom. Oh my God. <laughs> which, which I just think is the greatest thing. But I have had people like sweep over my feet or I have swept over other yeah. people's feet. So it's like, you're well, in danger of going to jail. Risk of going to jail. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Here's the one that I was talking about. If a broomstick falls over, company is coming. Company. What type of company? Doesn't say. I mean, it could be good company, bad company. It just means companies coming. And I know there was a movie. It might have been um, my favorite one that I watched, the very first one. What is that one with the, the two sisters? 
Uh, practical practical magic. magic. I'm pretty sure that happened in that one. And one of the aunts said, oh, company's coming. I'm I'm pretty sure. I could really? be wrong. I haven't seen that movie in so long, but. It's almost time. I know. We're coming up on October. I know. You binge watch all of the, change subject real quick. You, you binge watch all of like the traditional like Halloween and like the practical magic and all that. And I just strictly stick to like American horror story. And then I go into. I like everything. I love it. Uh, like the zombie ones. I, yeah, I like those. The ones I say, and I will probably get like, I'll probably get shit for is I don't like the traditional Halloween movies like Halloween or um, what's the Friday the 13th. Yeah, Friday, stuff. Jason. They, and, yeah, yeah, they were good to watch once, but I don't know. That's not what Halloween is to me personally. Yeah. I like the. The magical uh, yeah. side as a part of the, uh, as opposed to the, the gory side. Yeah. I don't like gory. I really like, um, I really like like horror, like scary, you know, yeah. like, yeah. 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 The conjuring. Mm-hmm. Oh, I yeah. love the conjuring. It's time to binge watch all of those again. Yes. <laughs> yes. And it, my husband may get sick of me watching them. So maybe we'll have to do some of that together. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, I listened to another podcast and they just did an episode on the conjuring. Like, Oh really? Yeah. Oh, so good. So good. Okay. Anyways. Okay. Here's another rain one. Okay. So to bring rain within three days, dip a broom into a bucket of water into, into which dried fern has been crumbled and then hold the broom aloft. Am I saying that right? Aloft shaking the water out to stimulate rainfall. So I've got a dried fern on my back porch because I let it die by accident. (laughs) So I could crumble that up into a bucket and then dip a broom into it and shake it. And that will bring rain. Of course, we're we're having rain, so I don't really need to bring rain. Well, yeah, but but, eh, you can never have too much rain. (laughs) Well, actually, you can. (laughs) Oh, maybe that's what your fern died from is because it didn't get enough water. (laughs) Well, yes, that would be a true statement. I I killed it. <laughs> I did it. It died. <laughs> I I remember I saved two ferns from you, and they're you living did. so gloriously on my back. Are they? <laughs> yeah, I got the same the the mine at the same time, and they're all dead. <laughs> mm-hmm. My one of mine has um, it's kind of burned because it got really hot this summer mm-hmm. and we get direct sunlight and eh, yeah. it's kind of iffy for them. So I tried to keep them as far into the corner. So a couple of the leaves that were hit by the direct sunlight were they're like crispy. Fried. Yeah. Yeah. They don't like sun. And so that's why I have them on my deck, but my mm-hmm. deck isn't my garden. I take mm-hmm. care of the garden, but I don't take care of the stuff that's, I don't think about it up on the deck. Yeah. And they don't get rain because they're under the deck in the yeah. shade. And yeah. so, yeah, they're, they're dead. They're yeah. Dead. Yeah. <laughs> um, placing a broom bristle side up near a doorway helps protect the house from evil spirits or negative energies. So I guess if you're feeling like someone's trying to hex you or you're feeling, you know, sometimes we just get those feelings where we know there's something lurking mm-hmm. out there. We get those vibes. Yeah. Try placing a broom bristle side up near the doorway and maybe that'll help protect you from it. Did I tell you when I was younger, always young, when I was little, I always thought that something was watching me. I don't think you've told me that. Yeah. Like, and like hearing, like placing a broom would keep evil away and stuff like that. And it wasn't until I was like significantly older, like maybe like 14, 15, where I stopped having that feeling. But I think I became less aware because, you know, when you're younger, you're more yeah. sensitive to those you things. Are. Mm-hmm. And so I just always felt like I was being watched when I was younger. And I feel like I needed to understand that I needed to place a broom near a doorway to help yes. protect you from negative energy. Too bad you didn't know that yeah. then. Yeah. yeah. Um, placing the broom under the bed is supposed to grant protection to the sleeper and also prevent mm-hmm. nightmares, which mm-hmm. I have a friend who gets nightmares or used to get nightmares all the time. And they, like you were looking for something to stop that feeling. And so they've got 
uh, dream catchers all over their bedroom. Oh yeah. I have a couple dream catchers. I, yeah. I was actually gifted my very first one from, she was a bus driver. One of my bus drivers oh. when I was younger and she had made it herself. Hmm. Oh, I don't remember I it her was name. Gorgeous. Oh, yeah. it, it wasn't, it, it's nothing extravagant. It's just this small, um, it's, I, I know our viewers can't see my hands, but it's like not as like maybe as big as your hand and it's like a small and it's handmade. You can tell it's handcrafted. The mm-hmm. beads, the beads on it are glued. There's no feathers or anything, but she gave it to me and she said, I know you're going to need this. She didn't give one to anybody else. I, that's what I was about to ask. I wonder if she was a witch and knew maybe that y- you were going to need it because I would sit and I would talk to her. She would be, she was like my friend on the bus. And I know that's mm-hmm. like, wow, friend, you're the loser. But, <laughs> but yeah, like, like I didn't have that many friends growing up until I reached high school. And so I was like, kind of like that lonely kid. And this bus driver was absolutely amazing. Was this the time period you felt like someone was watching you? Mm-hmm. See, maybe she knew, maybe she was a witch and she knew. And of course, maybe, you know, where you grew up, it's not like anybody could come out at that point in time and say, oh, I'm a witch. It's yeah. just not, you know, yeah. wasn't, especially a bus driver that she would have been fired in a heartbeat. Yeah. So maybe she was trying to keep you safe. Yeah, probably. I I still remember her face and her hair was gray, right? It was like natural gray hair, but it was super long down to her butt. Hmm. It was she. I remember her vividly. Very fascinating. I don't remember. I think her there's name. meaning in that story that we might yeah. have to talk about later. Mm-hmm. Um, if lightning blows your way, I guess another weather related one, mm-hmm. you put a broom on your porch to act as a lightning rod. Electri- <laughs> electricity and lightning are thought to be attracted to brooms. Oh. And did you know another way to safeguard your house uh, against lightning strikes is supposedly to put a spade and a broom outside the main entrance? You cross them. Oh, you, you cross a spade and a broom hmm. outside your main entrance. And that's supposed to safeguard your house against lightning strikes, which is interesting because if a broom is a lightning rod, how, then what, you know, yeah, it kind of guess that, yeah, the spade somehow adds a different dimension to that magic, I guess. Yeah. But why would you put anything on your porch or whatever to attract lightning? Cause you know, like the highest points are like always struck basically. That's why trees are hit all the time. This is my scientific side. Okay. Well, and <laughs> yeah, you, you got to remember that a lot of these came about in the olden yes. days when they didn't know it's these true. things. It's true. That's why you have the, that, I don't know what it's called. In what city? I don't know what city. New York, maybe. They have that really tall pole on top of one of the s- tallest skyscrapers. Like, is to, like from Ghostbusters. Uh, Zool. No. Are you the gatekeeper? Okay. I know what you're referring, but I can't. I haven't <laughs> seen those movies in long, like in a long time. <laughs> I'm clearly the nerd of this duo. <laughs> well, I was actually obsessed with those movies when I was little. I just haven't really? seen them in a long time. But you know what I'm talking about. Since I we do. have such tall skyscrapers, they put that there to deflect anything else from being struck because yeah. that's the highest point. So yeah, why it would looks you so cool. That? I've seen pictures of yeah. the lightning going to those things too. It's pretty yeah. cool. Um, another weather-related one. If you want to summon winds for weather magic, so you need wind to cast your spell, you throw a broom into the air off a cliff and that will summon the wind. I have no cliffs near my house. Yeah, where are you supposed to find a cliff? (laughs) I don't know. I have a balcony. (laughs) Yeah, well, that might work. That absolutely might. (laughs) I could just see your neighbors going, Rick's throwing shit out of her apartment. What the hell? What the hell? (laughs) And burning a broom stops the wind. Hmm. So hmm. interesting. I feel like burning a Although, broom. Although I think I've read somewhere and I don't know where it wasn't in the research for this, but I feel like I've read somewhere that you're never supposed to burn a broom. Yeah. That's what I was about to say. I was like, I feel like burning a broom is like a no, no. That's what I've, I, I didn't see it during the research for this, but I feel like I've read that too. So I don't know about that one. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not wise to leave an empty bed for too long. So if you're going to go away for any length of time, place a besom on your bed, 
laying the bristles on the pillow. Ew. (laughs) (laughs) The germaphobe. Yeah. But this is going to guard your bed against evil spirits until you return. Hmm. I probably won't do that one. <laughs> That's just unless it's especially like a, since you use them to kill bugs. You're yeah. gonna have bug corpses on your pillow. Yeah. First of all, I keep my broom like in a dirty, dusty closet, and then to lay it across my bed where my pillow is. No, thank you. The dirt, the the dirt, the germs. Well, but, use the one that you use for magic. Yeah, but I don't do have that. one of those yet. Not yet. Mm-mm. And then, um. Two crossed besoms hanging on the wall or at the, on the back of a door will protect the house from unwanted influences. Um, and with the exception of those brooms that are used for magical purposes, moving an old broom into a new house brings bad luck. Oh. So leave your brooms behind when y'all move. Does it Unless count? it's your magic ones. Does it count? Because I moved into this place and it had its, it still had its broom. Like that means the person before you probably was a witch and knew not to take it with them. Yeah. But then when, fun fact, <laughs> when my husband and I, we went to go clean out. So we borrowed my father's uh, truck and okay. before we returned it, we went to go clean it, but we went to one of those old fashioned uh, where you put quarters in and you spray. Oh uh, yeah. And yeah. We, we bought, we brought our broom from our house to sweep out the bed of the truck and I accidentally left it. What does that mean? <laughs> I think that's fine. Cause as long as it didn't go with the person who lived in that house to their yeah. next house, I, I think like, it's fine. I feel like there's like bad luck at like abandoning a broom <laughs> and then uh, abandoning. And then we went back and it was gone. So someone took it. <laughs> Well, there you go. So it found a new home. So it's all good. It was meant to be. (laughs) And I have one more. Mm -hmm. Avoid buying a besom in May. Hmm. There is a saying that says, buy a besom in May and you will sweep your friends away. Oh. So I had never heard that because weddings are a lot of weddings are in May. So I bet people buy besoms for their weddings in May. Hmm. I'm trying to think when my husband and I for, like left our broom, what month was it? Because we went and bought a new one. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, avoid buying them in, in May apparently. Hmm. So as with any of your tools, we've talked about dedicating and cleansing your tools in general. Mm-hmm. So when you get your broom, you'll want to do the same with that. And I found one website and She says that you hold the object in your hands and you focus your energy on the object Mm -hmm. and you take some time to really look at the tool, notice its shape, its size, its weight. You know, if it's a normal, uh, I mean, like a natural wooden handle, notice the knots in it and the, the bark on it and then recite a simple incantation to complete the process. And what she uses, she says... I dedicate this broom for the working of my magic. May it always be used for light, love, and positive things, harming none. And that's just what she uses. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And where to get a broom? You can make one. Mm -hmm. You can make a broom. Um, Pretty much anything you you find, you can find everything you need at a local craft shop. Uh, (laughs) Craft (laughs) shop. Maybe, maybe it's dangerous to give some of these recipes out. I don't know. I know. Um, you can like Michael's is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. And you can make a beautiful uh, broom at Michael's or you can go into nature and find stuff there. Mm-hmm. You know, there are beautiful sticks that, you know, I used to go and find walking staves and things like that, mm-hmm. but you could, you could find the parts of a broom to make a broom there. Just be careful what you pick because it would kind of suck to find out that you had harvested poison ivy for your broom. That would be a bad Ooh, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but you can you can also buy them if you're not crafty. Mm-hmm. You can go to Amazon.com has them. Etsy has tons of them. And some of them are just gorgeous. Um, Dragon Craft Creations, who makes our merch, has mm-hmm. some. She's down to one right now and she still doesn't have any wands. <laughs> I'm waiting for the wands, but anyway, but check her out. It's Dragoncraft Creations uh, Mm -hmm. at Etsy. I don't, I don't know. I was just going to say, who says Amazon.com anymore? (laughs) Apparently River does. Okay. Usually you just like, oh, I bought it on Amazon, not (laughs) Amazon.com. She's making fun of me. I am. (laughs) Uh, I mean, 
to each their own. If you say amazon.com, it's good for you, but I haven't heard that in a long time. <laughs> it's like, what did our parents used to say? The the intra web or something like that. Yeah. Oh, the, the World Wide Web. The World Wide Web. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. <laughs> Gotta love old people. Oh, I hope they're not listening to this. <laughs> well, if you say that, then it's fine. I feel like my dad still says it. So <laughs> I don't know if it's out of a joke or if like it's just like no he's idea. like serious of like the World Wide Web. Can you come help me search this up on the World Wide Web? The like, World Wide Web. <laughs> like, yes, yes, dad, I will help you. <laughs> Uh, I guess that's all I've got on brooms. What about you? That's all that I have too. So I mean, there's so much more. I know. I mean, I feel like there was a lot more to talk about, about brooms. So maybe we could do like a small part two or so like about brooms or maybe just like more about like witch trinkets and stuff like that. That's true. Um, but yeah, do our outro. Yeah. So you guys can find us at C3 Witchy Podcast on any social media. That's Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, TikTok. Uh, you can also find us at C3 Witchy Podcast.com. There you will find all the links to our social medias, which I, I need to fix it because right now, currently on the day that we are recording, it is um, not working. Some of the links aren't working. So I have to go back. Oh. Yeah, I have to go back and fix it. That will be fixed. I will assess. And then there you can also find our Patreon and our merch. Um, yes. C3 yes. Witchy Podcast. Uh, that's at Patreon. And um, patrons get fun like tote bags, witchy to-do lists, journal pages. We're also adding more. You also get exclusive recipes to our uh, drinks. And feedback is always welcome as we teak. Our, teak. <laughs> <laughs> We're teaking, man. <laughs> No, no, no. Tweak <laughs> uh, the recipes for our cocktail book. Um, yeah, I mean, y'all can help us. Yeah. If, if you try it, you know, we come up with these recipes and yeah. we think they're good. But if, you, mm-hmm. if you're if you like, that's really not good, that would be good to know before we try mm-hmm. to submit it yeah. in our little cookbook. Yeah. Or and also like it would also be a lot of help if you like, oh, I I really love sweet drinks. I really love sour drinks. So we mm-hmm. can have like a whole ton because I personally like sweet. River I know really likes like the salty, bitter. Mm-hmm. I like the more I, bitter. Mm-hmm. What? I hate those, but. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but yeah, like um, we have one recipe so far and um, our patron Nika said she was going out to buy the alcohol to make mm-hmm. it. So hopefully she'll report back and say whether she thought that one was a good one or not. Mm-hmm. We've also um, got a message. She got her tote bag. So we're, oh, not, good. we're not lying on the tote bags. Like we actually <laughs> sent you guys these things and she said that she loved it. She oh, said, good. Great. I so, hadn't seen that yet. Mm-hmm. That's good. Mm-hmm. And another thing that we forgot to mention is it is Maybon. Well, by the time yes. this this comes out it'll yes. be after maybon but we um completely overlooked it because one i've been running around like a lost <sighs> chicken or what is it with a chicken's head cut off because yes there's so much going on right now as a yeah. i am i am still a student and i've had four exams in the past like week like back yeah. to back to back to back so we're we're just i'm stressed river stressed <laughs> yeah i'm just so 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 busy mm-hmm. Not a time to breathe. I don't even know. I, Maybon's coming up, but I don't even know that I'll have time to celebrate it. Yeah, I think that we're gonna. I have think to it's do, tomorrow. We're gonna have to do maybe something special for it for Patreon. Oh, good idea. Let's, oh God, I didn't mean to yell. <laughs> <laughs> this this drink is really good. <laughs> <sighs> yeah. Okay. Well, we will be back. Yes, we'll be back. (laughs) Thanks for listening. Thanks.